What's up, Odoers, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a deeper dive into spreadsheet checks. Specifically, we're looking into how to spice up spreadsheet templates using the visual features available in Odoo's quality app. In our previous tutorial, we saw how to create this spreadsheet template, combining two quality check types, a pass-fail check type, and a measure check. While this functionality is super powerful, we can make our spreadsheets even more engaging by adding visual indicators like color coding and even charts and graphs that update based off of the data we enter. Let's jump into our Odoo database now to see how it works. All right, once again, we find ourselves on the Quality App dashboard. For this tutorial, we'll be making changes to the table check spreadsheet template that we created in the spreadsheet checks tutorial. I'll link that down below just in case you haven't watched it already. Now, first things first, I'm going to navigate to configuration at the top and then down to quality spreadsheet templates. I've already duplicated and renamed the table check template so we can make changes to it without altering the original one. So I'll open the duplicate one now by clicking edit on the right. First, let's use the table formatting to make this check look a little bit more professional. All I need to do is select the cells A1 to C4. And then from here, we're going to click Insert and then Table. Wow, this already looks so much better. I can change the look of the table using the sidebar here on the right side of the screen, but this looks fine to me, so we're going to leave it as is for now. All right, how about we start by adding a little bit more color to this template. Let's make it so that the failing fields appear red and the passing ones appear as green. We'll start by the pass slash fail check in cell B2. And I'll select the cell B2. And then we're going to click Format at the top, followed by Conditional Formatting. When we do this, opens a sidebar that allows me to automatically format specific cells based on the certain conditions, which I can add by clicking, you guessed it, Add Another Rule. In the Format Rules field, we have Single Color Selected by default, which means that the selected cell will appear in a certain color if the criterion we specify is met. At the bottom of the sidebar, we can see that the color currently selected is green in the formatting style section, which is fine for this rule. Now, I'll click on the Format Cells If field, which will open up a drop down menu. And here, we're going to select Is Equal To. Now, once we do, this causes a text entry field to appear directly below. I want this field to turn green if the value is true, so we're going to enter True. Finally, we'll just click Save. Now, with this rule created, if I tick the checkbox in cell B2, thus making the cell's value true, the cell is automatically going to turn green. Amazing. Now, let's go ahead and add another rule for when the cell is unticked or false. So from now, I'm just going to click Add Another Rule. But this time, in the Format Cells If field, we're going to enter is equal to. And then for the value, we're going to enter false. Finally, I'll click the color picker below in the formatting style. And we're going to choose a shade of red. And then we're going to click Save. So now, if I untick the checkbox in B2, it automatically turns red because the cell's value is false. We can also color code the measure check using conditional formatting. To do so, I'm going to select cell B3 and then click Add Another Rule. In the Format Cells If field, we're going to select Is Between, which causes two fields to appear directly below. As we configured it in the previous video, the check passes if the measure is between the values of 29 and 31. So I'm going to enter 29.001 in the first field and then 30.999 in the second. Then I'm going to click Save. And then we're going to click Add Another Rule. Then I'll select Is Not Between in the Format Cells If field. And then we're going to enter the same two values, which is 29.001 and then 30.999. Now. We'll click on the Color Picker tool and choose a shade of red. Now, if I enter a number within the specified range in cell B3, the cell will turn green. On the other hand, a number outside of that range will turn the cell red instead.
So next, let's format the past check confirmation cell. Right now, it says true or false. But depending on the check passers or not, we can make this look a little bit better with a checkbox. To do so, I'm going to select the cell before, and then we're going to click on data, then data validation. After clicking those, we're going to click add another rule. And then in the criteria drop down menu here, we're going to select checkbox. Then click save. Now, a checkbox appears in cell B4, which is automatically ticked or unticked depending on if the check passes or not. Right now, the check is currently failing, but if I tick the cell B2 and make sure we have a passing value in cell B3, for example, 30, the checkbox is automatically ticked. You should know this checkbox can't be manually toggled because cell B4 is dependent on both cells B2 and B3. Finally, let's go ahead and take a look how to add a graph to display the data that we entered in the measure check cell. I can do this by clicking insert and then chart. And this adds a basic chart to the spreadsheet and opens a sidebar where we can customize it. You can also drag and drop this chart anywhere else on the spreadsheet just to make sure it doesn't interfere with the rest of the information. So now if I click the chart type field, we can go ahead and choose different charts. For this example, we're going to use the gauge chart here in the miscellaneous section. The gauge chart type works best for our needs, so we'll select that. And next, I want to make sure the only cell listed here is B3 in the data range field. So we're going to delete the rest of these and just type in B3. And then click Confirm. Now we're going to move over to the Design tab and customize the chart a bit. First, we're going to change the background color here. Let's change it to a shade of gray. And next, we'll give this chart a name, something like table height. Next, we have the range field. This allows us to specify the range of the number shown on the gauge. So we're going to set the low number to 25, and we'll set the high to 35. Finally, we have the thresholds here at the bottom. Here we can set the thresholds the entered data should be within and the color displayed when that data is within or outside of the threshold. For the first row, we're going to enter the value of 29 and then change this to number. For the second row, I'll click on the yellow circle and turn this to a shade of green. Then I'll select the symbol, keep it as is. And then for the when value is field, we're going to change this to 31 and also change the type to number. Finally, I'll change the third circle's color to red. Altogether, this makes it so the gauge turns green when the number is entered between 29 and 30 and red when it's outside of that range. For example, since this number in cell B3 is 30, the gauge is set to green. However, if I enter 32, Instead, the gauge turns red. Pretty cool, right? And that's all I've got for you today, folks. You now know how to add a little bit of color to your spreadsheet templates, as well as a few other visual improvements. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.